Today we're going to look at one of the classics of the fountain pen world, and that is the Parker 45. So, when you first see it, it's a very sleek, stylish pen, and it uh, looks like Actually, it looks like a lot of other pens, but the fact is a lot of other pens look like it. <laughs> it might be the best way to describe it. Parker had huge success preceding this pen with the Parker 51. And uh, they wanted, a, a, as time goes on, you always come up with new designs. And they wanted a simpler, cheaper pen in some ways to make. And uh, they based this on, uh, this, they based this, this was designed by a man named Don Doman. He designed the Parker Jotter, the Parker 61, the Parker 75, and the Parker T1. Uh, so he was a well-known designer. And he based it on a, another pen, which was the Eversharp uh, 10,000. And Eversharp was another pen company that had been bought by uh, Parker in uh, 1957. So they owned the rights to the pen. So they took that as a jumping off point and they came up and he came up with this design. So... This is the classic version, and you can tell by the metal cap and the plastic body. There are a lot over, like this thing was made from 1960 to, I believe, 2007. So it was in production for 47 years and it sold many, 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 many copies. And there's been every, you know, every few years they were coming up with a new finish and a new pattern or something new to them. So there's all, you know, there's literally, gosh, could be hundreds of different finishes and colors. The Parker Classic had 14 colors, I believe, when it came out. So you had the metal cap, and then you had the body, um, the plastic body, for instance, uh, coming in. You know, it came in a huge selection of colors because it was sort of aimed as a student pen, right? So it was like meant for, you know, kids going to school, but it also, they upgraded it too, and it became an adult pen and a professional pen. But at first it came out with uh, colors, well, the, cl the classic colors, like black, of course, and gray and charcoal. So and then navy gray, olive gray, forest green, teal blue, vista blue, light blue, dark blue, which I believe this is dark, this is the dark blue version, rage red, matador red, yellow, pink, and tan. So they tried to hit, you know, pink, tan, yellow, rage red. They tried to hit as many different people that would like this, like, you know, to buy this pen. And they came up with a really different, like, the, the classic 51, for instance, uh, is similar in some ways. And uh, it's also quite different. And I, and one of the main differences is this fantastic nib that they came up with. And, I, and I'm saying fantastic, but what I'm really saying is this nib, I really like this nib. Um, and one of the reasons are you take it and you turn, you, you can unscrew the nib and it becomes a very simple feed uh, and section. And the nib, the nib just sets into this piece here. I'm not gonna pull it all apart. But it's easy to swap out these nibs, and you can still find all kinds of different nibs. This one has a gold nib, um, so it did actually, you know, it had steel nibs. You, you'll most likely find steel nibs, but this one came with a gold nib. I was quite surprised. I'm not going to pull it apart, but it says uh, 585 underneath the, the hood. But um, yeah, so you could pull out those feeds, you could clean them easily, you can swap the nibs, and... Uh, excellent designs. You know, sometimes getting a feed and nib out of a pen can, can be a little bit of a specialist <laughs> uh, 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 task. Uh, but this was very straightforward. So if you wanted to, you know, you damaged your nib or if it, you could buy a new one and uh, swap it out. Um, so yeah. So anyway, this is the classic version. Now, Later on, the next version of this, they came out with an all plastic body and plastic cap. And, and then they also came out with an all metal uh, version of this pen called the Flighter. Uh, and then they also came out with different metal pens with different finishes, like checkered patterns and all kinds of different uh, things on them. So it's a really interesting history to this pen. And uh, as you look at this clip, 
the clip, for instance, was taken. Um, the clip, the clip is based on the uh, Parker 21 Super from 1956. So they were borrowing the de design elements from across their line. Um, now, Parker, uh, you know, Parker is still in business and they're still making lovely pens, uh, but they're not the leader today that they used to be. You know, their upper line pens are very popular. The Parker Duo Folds, you, they're quite expensive. And then they make the pa Parker Jotter, which is still in production. And they have reissued the uh, Parker 51. And they, uh, they uh, you know, there's all kinds of nice pens by Parker. But in some ways, they've they're become less of a leader in the industry and um, sort of forgotten in a strange way. And um, which is a real shame. It'd be nice to see Parker come up with a new pen design that blows everybody's socks off, you know? So <laughs> maybe someday they'll do that. Um, but anyway, the, and when I say they uh, became a leader in design, I'm just going to show you a couple pens that, you know, this is a Pelican 12. And as you look at that, you can see the, it's like the same tapered shape, uh, higher quality materials, of course, in the Pelican. Uh, a modern pen such as the studio you can see elements uh, of inspiration there if i would even i would even hazard a guess that the classic studio 2000 you know was inspired in some way because people borrow they you know i'm not saying they're copying but you take inspiration and you build on it and that's what artists do and People who design these pens are artists. And so the classic, you know, Studio 2000, uh, uh, Lamy 2000, you could almost say is a bulked up, uh, <laughs> there's bulked up similarities. You know, it's a little fatter, but you can see the tapered ends. Just so there's inspiration being drawn from this pen. And this pen, of course, is inspired by uh, the Eversharp 10,000. So you see how people, when they're designing things, uh, draw inspiration uh, from one another. Now, um, quite commonly with the Parker 45, there is one issue that occurs, and that's the shrinkage that you see occurring at the section, at the grip section here. I don't know, I think it just over time sort of sinks down a bit, uh, but it, it doesn't really damage the pen. It's just a, you know, it's just a little dent there, possibly from people holding it you know, gripping it and the, the warmth of their hand. So the quality of the plastic, for whatever reason, you get this shrinkage and, and distortion occurring here. And apparently that's quite common in the Parker four, uh, 45. So, um, yeah, but that's, you know, that's not really damaging the pen in any way. I'm going to, because it, I'm going to ink this up in a, with an ink that I like, that I, but I don't use very often. I'm just going to shake it up. And that's the Jacques Herban Emerald de Chevrolet, the Emerald Green, right? Excuse my Atlantic Canadian accent <laughs> as I try to pronounce things. Um, so anyway, yeah. So uh, it, normally I put this in a noodler a Ahab because I don't really worry about the pen too much. And even though this is a vintage pen and, you know, a shimmering ink, you know, I, in a lot of pens, I would possibly worry about it clogging up the feed. But the feed on this and the section are easy to clean. So I'm going to put it in this. And, uh, you know, hopefully um, I will get a very nice line out of it. It's a medium nib. Uh, so it's a, and it's a wet writer, which is why I'm going to use this ink in it. I just want to see how it works. I'm going to shake it up. Now, before I do that, I'm going to just undo it. And I'll show you the uh, filling mechanism. It's a metal uh, c converter, but it's also one of the aerometric ones. So you push down on this, and there's a latex sack inside, and that is how you fill it. These are still used by uh, Parker, of course. They're still made. Uh, Pilot Metropolitan comes with a very similar uh, 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 converter. Uh, not my favorite converter in the world, but it works. It still works. So <laughs> I'm going to make sure that's there. And I'm just going to try to get a fill. So I'm going to put that in. You can hear it drying up. Try not to get ink 
everywhere like I usually do. I'll wipe that off. <laughs> Put this on because the cat is nearby. She hasn't shown up yet, but she is nearby. She often is. I kind of feel like a character from a Philip Pullman book <laughs> with my animal nearby all the time. So wipe that off. I'm just going to take this. Anyway, so it's a, a slip cap. I love pull, slip cap, pull cap. It, and it's very uh, tight. It, um, you know, it has a good seal. There's like a metal band right here, kind of gold plated. The clip is gold plated and uh, it gets, it's very firm. It doesn't fall off. It's very nice. And it posts very well. It actually posts very deeply, actually. And uh, as you can see, and the section is, the grip section is very long on this pen. Uh, and it, you know, it, even though it's all plastic and it tapers down, uh, you know, I don't find my fingers slipping on it. I, uh, some metal, shiny metal sections, I, I do find that happens, but I've not found it with this. And uh, once again, when you're using a hooded nib, uh, some people find them a little, well, you know, they don't like them for, uh, for certain reasons because it's hard to get the angle right. But I always uh, align my clip with the nib. And that just gives you a visual reference to where the tip of the nib is. So it doesn't take long to do. You get really quick at it. You just line it up so you can see that, you know, when I look at the, the clip in my hand, I know where the nib is, right? So it's like right here. So the quick brown. Now that's actually coming out a lot darker than I have. I, I, I washed this pen, so it should be clear, but it's uh, putting down a nice thick line. Um, there's, it's not what I would call a, a flex nib, but there is line variation as you use it. Um, and the feed keeps up quite well. Yeah, so very nice. Hmm. That's coming out almost like a, a darker the color than I was expecting. But as that goes in, you know, the as it settles through, I think it'll you get that nice emerald color. It's a very odd color, and I like it quite a bit. But that actually is quite beautiful. Anyway, um, so there you have it. One of the most in, one of the classic Parker pens, the Parker Forty Five. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's just a lovely pen. I, I lucked out in getting this one on eBay. I didn't, um, expect it to be in as good a shape as I got it when I got it. I thought it'd be a little <laughs> broken, but it just needed a little tidy up and, uh, cleaning up. It's, you know, so yeah, it's, a the, there's a lot of variations and they were made over a long period. And in some ways they you know, until recently, weren't as collectible as, say, the Parker 51. So you can still find them around because there were so many made. The cat's here now. That's why it's gotten dark. Uh, so you can still find them. They come in a lot of different colors. Oh, don't eat the cat. Don't eat the pen. Um, a lot of different colors, a lot of different finishes. Um, beautiful pen, classic in design. So if you're lucky enough and if you're interested, look around. You can still find them uh on auctions or you know through you can still find them on different online stores beautiful pens um well worth picking up classic in design and i'm repeating myself but anyway so i hope you like the video if you do give it a thumbs up and you know what if you're new to the channel or if you're you know coming back several times and you haven't already i'd love it if you subscribe to the channel we're slowly getting to uh our you know, we're almost at a thousand subs and it's great watching uh, uh, people uh, interact. And if you have a comment or do you have a Parker 45, which is your color, favorite color, 
I'd love to hear from you. Uh, that's part of the fun of doing YouTube, like getting to uh, getting to interact with the pen community. The pen community is such a great thing. Anyway, anyway, and I hope you have a nice day and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.